Hey guys, I'm back. Um, I wanted to do a video on my symptoms because I've had a lot of people ask me questions about what symptoms I had and I, I had a lot of them in the two and a half years before I was diagnosed. Um, so basically going back when I figured out I had HIV by doing some um, research and finding out who it came from, um, I was with this person from um, the beginning of uh, 2013 till the end of August 2013, so about eight months. And I, from what I can remember, and looking in my paperwork from my doctor's offices and stuff like that, the first real sign was um, in September, mid-September. Um, that's when I had gone to a gastroenterologist for esophagus pain. So I had um, real discomfort, like it felt like right inside where my esophagus meets my stomach. And it was just like achy, 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 and it wouldn't go away, and you know, Tums wasn't doing anything, so I went in for that, but at the same time, I was having these cluster headaches, and I'm not a headache person, so this was really weird for me, um, so I remember, like I said in another video, looking over at my daughter in the car, and it was like just even turning my head and turning my eyeballs was really like too much, Tylenol wasn't doing anything, and so I had asked him about it during that visit, if there was any connection between my esophagus and my head, and I, I mean, I felt like I knew the answer was no, but I thought maybe he's gonna tell me something that I really had never thought of. Um, unfortunately, of course, he had no answer for that because um, he wasn't looking at me and thinking I was somebody who could have HIV. I'm sure that never had even crossed his mind, as many other doctors bypassed many of my symptoms because I don't look like somebody who would have it. Um, I don't fit the typical stereotypical mold. So, um, so after that, um, I had uh, my next symptom was I've got the this is my list from one doctor's office just over two years, and it's like when you look at them all together, this is what I would say this is like the flashing red light, like, well, hello, it's all right there. Um, so then I had vertigo, and that lasted for about uh, I feel like that was about six weeks. I actually ended up taking something for it. I'd never had vertigo in my life. And I'd lay down in bed and my head would just be spinning and I'd have to sit up and I almost, you know, felt like I was gonna throw up. And um, I can't remember what they thought it was. I think they just kind of thought it was just age, hormones, something like that. But um, I believe that that was HIV related. I've never had a problem with it since I um, started with my medication and um, except for the time where I went skateboarding without a helmet that one time and fell back and hit my head and then I had vertigo for like a month, but that's all gone now. Um, so that had nothing to do with HIV. Um, so then, um, like I said, the, um, the esophagus issue with the headache, all of these things would fade over time. So I was just never thought of it again. So um, what I ended up having about, let's see, it was about six months after um, I think I got it, um, started having, uh, you know, yeast infection type problems. And I want to explain um, what exactly that was. So my yeast infections did not smell. There was no discharge. They just itched like insane, like um, the worst mosquito bite you could even imagine. And if you, you know, if I would itch it. I know that sounds really gross and, you know, try to be mature about this. Please don't write that I'm disgusting. Um, it's, you know, women get yeast infections and this is part of having a female body. So we get them sometimes, but this was like nothing I'd ever had before. And I'd have to go into like a cold bathtub to calm the itch and um, nothing was working. Like I said in another video, Diflucan taken daily for two weeks wasn't doing anything. And neither was, um, you know, any of the over-the-counter things that you can basically put inside you that you would think would take care of it immediately didn't. Um, but I, I was itching so bad that I was actually rubbing myself, scratching myself to the point that I was bleeding. And I didn't care because it itched so bad. And uh, one way to describe it, um, I'm gonna be really um, graphic. So if any other women feel like they've experienced this, it might be a red flag to somebody, it could help somebody. It felt like hot molten lava dripping down inside of me from somewhere deep inside and when that happened it was instantaneous itchiness very uncomfortable so um there's that so during that time when i had these yeast infections they weren't going away so i had some medication that was expired and um, i just, just decided to try to use it anyways because i was just you know kind of desperate to be in some kind of relief from this 
uncomfortableness and just the over-the-counter stuff and the Diflucan which was prescribed wasn't working so I had this stuff um, for bacterial vaginosis and literally it's clear gel and it's something that you do have to put inside you and um, what came out of me <laughs> which I've called the doctor's office and I asked them about this um, was little spots what you would think would have been blood but I didn't have my period were little spots of black it was black and I will go to my grave and say that there was something black that came out of me in that gel and there's been no explanation for it I've looked up HIV and black stuff coming out of you because I I really couldn't find anything on it so then I was like well maybe it was because the medication was um, was expired or maybe it was some reaction with HIV. I have no idea. I still don't know, but I just want to put that out there because that's never happened to me in my life. It's never happened since. And it was just, it was black. It was not red. It was not dark brown. It was black. Okay, so that happened that one time when he was at medicine. Um, so yeast infections had happened like that over and over and over again, but just beyond the typical yeast infection, not curable. Um, so then I had to go into um, an ear, nose, and throat doctor because I had a lymph gland. My lymph node, I mean, was um, just on one side, had swollen up. So that was another one. Um, it was very obvious. I could feel it. You could, I don't even, I think you could kind of see it. Um, that went away on its own. He figured it was just something to do with my, um, I don't know, I don't think he really gave an answer. He just said that it's probably something that would go away. Um, he wasn't worried about it if it went away and it came back and went away. Because if it, if it gets bigger, and stays there that was his concern and of course in my mind I'm thinking it's cancer or something and if it went away then maybe it was okay and it did go away so I didn't think about it again um, and but and then shortly after that or somewhere near there I ended up getting this little rash around my face just these little red spots and I went to a, a dermatologist for that and he thought that it was just age-related that when you hit around 35 to 50 that you can have um, a hormonal change and that it can create you know like um, a rash it wasn't pimples it wasn't pus but I mean I could pick them and I was I was they're driving me crazy and so I went in for that and I was put on a six-week um, dose or a six-week um, what do you call it um, he gave me six weeks of an antibiotic basically so I went on an antibiotic for that and then the yeast infection started again because of the antibiotic antibiotic basically because my system was already thrown off obviously from the HIV which would create a yeast infection anyways and then I had um, this uh, antibiotic which was um, messing up my my ability to um, keep the yeast down so it's just it was like doubled so it was even worse during that time um, so then after that um, of course the rash cleared up uh, everything kind of cleared up um, I had um, I definitely had um, a lot of different earaches I've always had trouble with my right ear and I went on a flight two separate flights and during takeoff around 25,000 feet on both of them my ear um, ruptured my eardrum ruptured and the first one it was like air just blowing through my ear it incredibly painful like super duper acute pain and I was like ah and I like stuck my finger in my ear and um, had to hold it in there and then I would like slightly release it and it would sort of let go and then it, it would that flight that one back from New York it did finally stop and it was like a two minutes of excruciating pain and then it kind of stopped so it sealed itself up or whatever but then I had a flight from um, uh, San Francisco to Las Vegas and that one it, it, it ruptured and this was after that New York flight and um, and it literally um, just wouldn't let up. So I had about 20, 25 minutes of just excruciating pain, shoving my finger in my ear. I had to have the bag in front of my face because I was bent over in my um, my seat. I had people around me that were like kind of ignoring me because I think I it, they didn't know what was going on with me. And I called uh, the call button and I was like by myself and they basically said something like, you, maybe you should have talked to your doctor before you were flying if you have ear trouble. And I'm like, like, I'm in agony like I've never had that kind of pain before and it I literally my face went white I remember I had to have the bag because I thought I was gonna throw up all of a sudden and I did get through the flight um, and then I ended up buying these little rubber things for your ear that um, stopped the pressure so I've used those ever since but I don't know if that's related to HIV but I have a feeling that my um, inner ear like my eardrum lining was thinner because I that's just bizarre like I've never had my eardrum explode on it flight and it happened during that time during two separate flights 
So that was very strange, and I definitely think that's probably related to HIV, although it's never been, um, um, no one's ever said for sure that that is the case, but I, I feel like it had to be. Um, I just feel like everything on me was falling apart, basically. Um, let's see, so um, my ear, I had a lot of sore throats along the way that never turned out positive for strep, and I just kept thinking, this has to be strep, because they would last quite a while, and you know, like maybe like two weeks or three weeks, and um, there was just really no explanation for them other than just viral, and they'll go away. And they did, but they were never strep. So there was that. Um, as I got closer to, oh yeah, <laughs> oh, and before I forget, um, I went to my doctor about the ear thing, and they said, you know, in the future, if you fly, um, you know, you might want to use one of these when you fly. So they recommend that when I get on the plane and we get to a certain altitude, I put this up to my nose and go, and then it just opened my ear up. Opens your ears up. Okay, I'll do it on the other side too. Okay, I'm not gonna do this on a flight next to a bunch of strangers. This is ridiculous. So, anyways, I just stick to the old method. And so far I've been okay flying, but this was like, really? They sell these? <laughs> this is hysterical. I would never have done this on a flight. Very embarrassing. Okay. So just a couple more things. Um, I, I used to have this thing where my hands would tingle after I got out from surfing for like, um, one time I remember it lasted for like, uh, 30 minutes and it was like pins and needles in my hands and I remember asking my boyfriend Eric if he ever had that happen to him and I know the water's cold here so I thought maybe that was it um, but that's never happened since I got better and it, I think it was definitely related to HIV so I had uh, numbness and tingling like um, total pins and needles just I could feel pins exactly like that it felt exactly like pins and needles and it would last for about 30 minutes but for some reason for me it only happened after I got out of the water and I'd carry my board and then I'd get in the car and I'd be like, my, I'd start to drive and I'd feel that my hands were like pins and needles. Okay, so then right before I was diagnosed, about three weeks before, this is when all my flu-like symptoms started and I had um, the achy, um, just body aches all day long. I was taking like Tylenol and ibuprofen around the clock to try to just feel somewhat normal. I was having um, uh, just super lethargic. I just wanted to sleep. I wanted to be in my bathtub every day. I felt like that would just give me a little boost of energy. No appetite at all. Nothing sounded good. I just didn't feel like eating at all. Not nauseated, just didn't feel like eating at all. And then um, as I got closer to my diagnosis, I was getting sicker and I started to have fevers in the night. And then those fevers um, turned into night sweats. And the night sweats um, I thought was my fever I thought it was my body's way of breaking the fever, and I thought it was actually, my body was working on getting better, that's what I thought. But then after four nights of this, that's when I decided to go back to the doctor again, after this was like probably the third time in a month, and um, you know, say, hey, this is not getting better, and I'm, I have a fever now, my body's really fighting something, something's really wrong, and that's when they ended up sending me to the internal medicine doctor and having a full-blown blood panel done, including HIV, and that's when I found out. So um, those were most of my symptoms. Um, I, I, that's all of them, I should say. I, I don't think I'm missing anything. Um, I had lower back pain also, which I don't wanna throw anything out there that's, cause I don't know what this was. They never really determined. They thought it was maybe a strain from surfing, but I hadn't done anything out of the ordinary the day before. And I had a really horrible back pain and I thought, oh, I have a kidney infection. And this was getting close to when I found out that I had HIV, so it was around that time. Um, and they found a fuzzy, they did a x-ray and they found this little fuzzy thing they thought was like a, um, a kidney stone. And uh, nothing was ever, that was it, I never even, we never even talked about it again. So I don't know if that was anything or not, but the back pain went away. It was not, it was negative for kidney infection. I didn't have a kidney infection, but I did have that back pain. And I, I don't know what that was. Um, so, I think that is it. Um, I'll list them all. But again, a lot of these things um, on their own wouldn't seem strange. It's, oh, thrush, hello, thrush, that was the big one. Um, a friend of mine who um, is a nurse practitioner, she said an, a healthy adult who has thrush is a, a big red flag because that is something only very ill older people get or somebody with HIV and AIDS would get um, or babies. And oh my gosh, one symptom I almost completely forgot was um, smell. I've had this really weird smell. So was, when I started getting really sick 
right before I was um, diagnosed with AIDS about, uh, I'd say within a month before that, I was having this really intense smell, especially when I surfed and I re remember asking my boyfriend to smell my, like, do, do you smell it on me? Like, do you smell? There's this weird smell. And I thought it was something metallic from the ocean that was like on my skin. It was so strange and it was like, a, it was sickening. It made me feel sick smelling it. Um, as I got sicker and progressed into AIDS, the sense of smell, the smells that I was smelling were like things that were burnt and um, like it's very hard to describe and it, it, it's like something that was like not like I was smelling it, like it was coming in through my nose, it was more like it was just wafting somewhere in my brain and my memory of smell and it was just there and it was very hard to describe but it basically the smells were really... Um, they were intense and they weren't great and they would linger and um and they would just stay even though i knew they weren't there so those things um got better as i got better but those that is not gone yet and no one's been able to give me an explanation on this um i only know one other person that smelled um oh and it did start probably mm, about a year and a half before i actually got sick i was smelling um ashtrays and the smell of cigarette smoke and i don't smoke so i remember asking the ear nose and throat doctor about that and he had no explanation for it so i still to this day don't know why i have strange smells um i can't really find anything on hiv in regards to it so i'm hoping somebody will have something for me um, with these videos and may be able to give me some kind of explanation because it's totally there um, and it's and now it's manageable but it, it is there like every day usually there's at some point during the day where I'll have like something smelling like a strange smell like um, like last night I was laying there in bed and it was happening and I, I just I know it's me I know it's nobody else and I know the smells not really there but it's like in my brain so anyways that's another symptom that I've had with this and that's the only one that I feel now. It's the only thing. There's nothing else that I feel other than that. So, oh, and just to clarify, I did not smell myself. Eric never smelled anything on me. It was just what was going on in my my brain or my nose, probably more in my brain because there was really no smell there. There has really never been a smell. It's just kind of a, fan it's a phantom smell. That's what it is. It's phantom, phantom smell. Oh, I gotta look that up. Anyway, um, I, I don't smell. Thankfully, I smell nice. All right. Also, you can have HIV and never have AIDS. That's definitely something that happens to many people, especially if they're really smart and they test quite often. If they find out that they have HIV, their blood is checked and they don't even start treatment until their, their viral load starts to climb. So you can have HIV for a long time, sometimes, without even having to take any medication at all. Um, but a lot of people find out that they have it because they end up with AIDS and then they get very sick or they have HIV symptoms that are suspicious enough that they are testing and finding out and, and it doesn't have to turn into AIDS. But like me and some other women that I've met through all my videos, they've had the same situation as me where it took getting very sick to find out what was causing the illness because they never thought they could get it either and they did. So. Um, it, you know, you should just be testing it, especially if you have a suspicion or worry, just test to at least know for sure. Either way, there's people that will wait years and years and won't do anything and they're terrified that they have it and they're living with this thought that they have it and they might not. <laughs> there's probably a really good chance that you don't have it. So it's good to test, always test. And if you do test and you have it, it's not the end of the world. It isn't the end of the world anymore.